All right, we are live and on the air. Hey, everybody, and we're joined by Mick in the UK. Are we live? Just let me pass her over there. Live. Then. Here we go. Hello. Hello, everybody. <laughs> I'm gonna have to. We've had uh, atrocious weather today. Um, it's been absolutely bucketing it down, but it's stopped about half an hour ago. And the sun is coming out, so it looks like it's written in the stars that we are going to video this site today. All right. Put my sunglasses on. Okay, how's that? Should I do an intro? You want to do the intro, Jay? How, we, how, how do you want to do this? I think we did. <laughs> That's it, is it? That's all. <laughs> Where are we then? All right, shall I? Shall I start? Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Okay. All right. So this is our continuation of the tour that we're doing of Dartmoor. Um, this is a site called Merryvale. It's a prehistoric complex. Um, you can see behind me one of four rows. This is, I can't remember exactly what, the four is down here, which is the smallest of um, all of the rows. I think there's 86 in the Dartmoor National Park. There's something like 300 in Britain. So that's uh, quite a significant percentage in this little area. Um, and row four is the smallest of them. And the longest is one that I'm hoping we can go to. We're going to see if we can get reception there. And it's, it's uh, over three kilometers long. Holy cow, um, three kilometers? So, yeah. Two miles? Yeah, it looks interesting. For our stateside friends? It, it, it's, yeah, I think it's 3.2 something kilometers long. Oh. Um, so, we're, yeah, again, in a beautiful area, you can see typical sort of Dartmoor countryside. Um, nice. Starting with a large stone at the end. The same with this row over here as well. We'll go to that one in a minute. Um, it's, there's a large row at the beginning and then it just goes off. There's here, you can see, this is actually like an avenue. So this is in itself, I guess, two rows actually. Um, yeah, yeah. so there's like, a, yeah, there's like an avenue going down here. Um, there's uh, to point out again, there's more of these sort of, uh, blocks or chunks of what just looks like crystal embedded in the rock. Um, and that's, that's the same for all of them. Um, I would like to say as well that you can join in. Like, if you want to go anywhere, if you see anywhere that looks interesting to you, then you can comment. And, yes, please. Um, that's right. Okay. Please sound off in the chat. Yeah. Let's go to it now. Sue Purvis is here. Hey, Mick and Jay, hearing you loud and clear. Great. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate that. It's good to see you, Sue. <laughs> um, okay, so we are out in Dartmoor National Park. This is day three of our tour. Uh, Mick uh, may remember, so Dartmoor, more modernly well known for its Sherlock Holmes, Hound of the Baskervilles uh, references and yeah. setting, right? That's where they, that's where that book took place and then obviously films and all. Uh, but more anciently, it is a setting for hundreds of Neolithic sites, right? Like the one you're at now. Yeah, um, I wanted to point this out because <clears throat> this looks like it's been created, right? This little stream going through here. Um, and I wanted to uh, just use this to point out that there's probably been a lot of um, different stages of the building of this complex, I would imagine. Um, there's, for example, I think one of the, the cans up there, I think the row goes through one of them. So it even looks like they've overlapped or something. Um, you're right. <laughs> Got to jump over the river. Uh, so yeah, as you can see with this one, again, same kind of stones of these chunks of what look like crystal in them, and uh, a large one at the beginning, so leading off. And, and just again, why? What on earth are they doing these things? Uh, very calculated. It's, though, there's right? also so built, like so constructed. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, and again, like two two rows and avenues. I mean, there's, they they say that um, 
I think they state officially that these are for ritualistic purposes, kind of ceremonies. Um, and yeah. that's just something you just you just hear that a lot, and it's very vague. I mean, that can mean anything, can't it? I mean, <laughs> you can have a healing ritual, and you can have a you know, there's, there's all sorts of rituals that that go on, both po- positive and negative. Um, but I can I can imagine so. I can imagine like there was some kind of like healing practices going on here or something. Um, so, this so yeah, we'll walk down. Double stone rows separated by a stream, each consists of more than 150 stones, mostly under a meter high. Interesting. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, they're silly. Look at them. Some of the stones are tiny. Yeah. Like you can pick these up. As I said yesterday, they're not all megalithic. Some of them are. There's a standing stone. I'm not sure if you can pull a map up, Jay. Yeah, yeah, I've got um, here. Yeah, you've got it up, have you? So yeah, so there's the stone circle and a standing stone off in this direction. I can see it. You probably can't. Right. Um, but there's also some things. This other row is a bit more interesting. Uh, <laughs> we've got across the river. <laughs> Shall I walk backwards? See this? I mean, there are meniers and stone circles, dozens of them within a couple hundred meters of you. Yeah, and there are. There's also you just walking around the area. There are also loads of, um, again, like yesterday, um, sort of like shapes cut out of the rocks and really suspiciously looking flat surfaces and <clears throat> right angles and that kind of thing. Just off the row here um is uh one of these cysts I, I, again yesterday we saw a sort of incomplete one mm. this is a much more complete one so this is what a cyst is it's basically a hole in the ground Hi. with like uh <laughs> see you later what's that <laughs> um yeah so like a hole in the ground with stones around it and then you often get a capstone as well and i've seen these in Portugal and Poland. And, so how's that different um, from the so dolmen? They, it's not so different from the dolmen, is it? Mm. Really? I mean, it's um, it's just in the ground. I mean, like if this was lifted up so that the bottom of this was at ground level and you put earth around it, you would say it was a, a, a mound or cairn. And if it was just on its own and lifted up and on the ground, you would say it was a dolmen. So, but so many point. dolmen were, were, have been found buried, right? Like they, they reconstruct them, they dig out the sides and like, who's to say it wasn't just, that's not just sediment around it. You think it's definitely legitimately buried. The earth was. It looks like it from here, but there's been a lot of reconstruction at this site as well. Most of these sites have been reconstructed, particularly if they're in national parks. Right. Um, and this is, an, a, this is a, a heritage site, right? So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so there is, I'm not sure, people might be interested in something that's, I think is about halfway down the row. Um, there is actually like a little mound, kind of combo circle. And, it's, you know, it's just, again, it's weird how um, these megaliths, there is so much like, there's so many of them that there's, it's hard to define what's what. Like you say, is that a dolmen? Is it a cyst? Is it, you know, what is a long barrow sometimes a, a, a dolmen with some just earth stretched out the back of it? So there's like, uh, they seem to just <laughs> have created all these different formations mm. um, and they don't repeat them. They don't repeat themselves very often. You know, even with pyramids, there's very much different sort of building and architectural techniques and this kind of thing. But here is this, like, as I say, it's, it must be about halfway what is that? down there is this. Yeah. What is that? There's a hole. It's you a can circle. step into it. <laughs> it's a circle. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's a circle. Energy and you can just, you, you know. It. Probably. I mean, like, we haven't had the chance to, but we would like to come here and, you know, it's difficult with a camera on and everything, but we'd like to come and like, see all the energies here and you kind of have to get in a more peaceful state of mind to be able to feel it. But I'm sure that there's, you know, <laughs> something going on here. I, I can't imagine if this is a part of the puzzle, which is this massive um, collection of artifacts and, and monuments and from this global civilization, if this is part of it, then it's highly possible that there's some, a lot of energy work and things going on here. 
Um, so yeah, so this one's a bit longer. I think this is the longest one. I don't even know how long it is. I think how, how long? What is it, Jay? Is it uh, the northern double row is 182 meters, 596 feet for our American friends, uh, with an average width between the rows of about a meter or three feet. The second row runs roughly parallel with the first, but it is a bit longer, stretching 263 meters. So it's another 80 mm. meters longer. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, what's the megalithic yard, Mick? That's like point, roughly point. I don't know off the top of my head. I should do something. I... Um, that's worth a Google, I think. Um, <laughs> I know what the megalithic <laughs> yard is. Uh, point eight three meters, right? So it's to, equal to uh, 2.72 feet, point eight three meters. I think it's safe to say that uh, stretching 263 meters, uh, and the other one's 182 meters. Uh, I think that's about 80 meters. So that's about 80 megalithic yards. You mean? Two, yeah, two, 272 feet difference. <laughs> here. So I don't have a calculator app. It's the one thing I don't open on my supercomputer is a calculator. Um, but the yeah, while so you're doing like, that. I almost 10 megalithic yards uh, longer. And you know, we uh, in this civilization for some reason love the solid number 10, so kind of an interesting. Well, this one stops here, look. I think this one, this is the end of, of uh, what number is this one? I can't even remember. I think it's just three, isn't it? And then we've got another, as you say, like roughly 80 meters, I think you said, didn't you? Yeah, and, the, and um, it says here that this is longer across the moor. It has terminal stones blocking each end. So the second row has a terminal stone at both sides, right? Whereas the first row yeah. has one terminal, and then it goes into a cairn. Is that what you're saying? Um, well, it, there's a cairn halfway down. That can. This is the end of this longest one here. That, like you say, there's these two terminal terminal stones. Right. Um, I only know where three of the rows are. Maybe you can help us find the other one. Right? There's, I know row four is down here by the um, stone circle which, and the standing stone, which we can go down to in a minute. I know there's these two rows here, but I don't know where the other one is. The other one is a single row. It's not. It's or it's a single uh, line. It's not. It's not um, the row. It's not an avenue. Oh, okay. Right? Oh, right, right. And so where is it then? Uh, it's to the. It looks like if you take the smaller one, the shorter one, to the west, you'll see it at the end. Okay. Oh, I think I do see it. I think I see it. And it's right next okay. to another uh, here. So that one. Right. So the the north row, the smaller row, should run into a cairn at the southwest, right? Yeah, I think it's over there, right? Right. Not... And so parallel to that cairn, I mean, this is fascinating. I wish you could see this on a, on a, on how it's laid out, but like, hmm. yeah, it's it's pretty bad. There's actually, oh no, there are more rows where you are. There's the center row. There is the okay, let me click on mm -hmm. the north row. Southwest row three, south. Oh, and then the slabs one and two. I see. Okay. So there's the center row there, and that must be what that is. That's the north row. The north row runs in. It's here. just stuff all over the place that we'll have a look at. Over Those are slabs here. one and two, right? That you were just at. Yeah, I think so. That's the end of the the longest one. So if you're facing the north row, so if you look north and face the smaller row from those slabs. At like yeah. and that's at your twelve o'clock. Then the small, then the single row, the southwest single row should be to your left at like a ten or eleven. Oh, okay, over there then. Yeah. Right. Because you're walking up okay. here, right? You're walking up to the smaller north row now. Well, I'm walking, I wanted to show this. Like, I think this whole place is covered in stuff. I think this is really old, personally. Mm. I think this is. As I say, built over stages, and these rows might have been more modern, but I just get the feeling like this was a massive 
area where these megalithic builders were doing something. Just, let's just, as I say, there's just stuff everywhere. And like we see these like triangular shaped rocks and, and things that we've noticed in places like Sweden and other sites. And, and again, it's just a, it's like you get a hunch when you come to these places. And I've, I've, I've been to so many now. There's certain places I've been to, and I just had this feeling like there was a lot of history there, you know. And this is one of those places. Right. right. And Dartmoor has so many interesting stories and things like that. I mean, um, you can look up the myths and legends. I think there's all sorts of like pixies and witches and um, yeah, we have those stories of and legends here, actually, for centuries. The Dartmoor folklore yeah, and legends just... have encompassed tales of pixies, ghosts, witchcraft, weird happenings, and a host of deep-seated beliefs. These have been passed down through the generations via fireside stories, books, and local tradition, all of which have played their part in keeping the tales alive today. <laughs> there can be no question that Dartmoor and its landscape has helped fire people's beliefs and imagination from the thick mists that suddenly appear and roll across the moor to the dark, bottomless mires and the craggy granite tours, each lends an air of miser mystery and magic, not misery, all ripe and associated legends and tales. Uh, on that note, I think we should actually reach out to the chat real quick uh, and just say hey to everyone who's here. Sue uh, mentions that there are a couple of links uh, that she's got. Uh, Legends and Myths of Maryvale is a good one. Uh, and Legendary Dartmoor and Visit Dartmoor are good sites. Thank you very much for those resources, Sue. Uh, bird song 007. Ah, oh, that's the good. That's the good bird song. Bird song 006. <laughs> I'd be worried. Like eh, maybe a little double cross there. But uh, 007, how are you? Uh, hello. Do you know if it is local stone or was it moved there? This is a great question. Mm. I don't know uh, specifically about these sites, but um, I think generally they are local. If they're not local, they kind of mention it, like with Stonehenge. Right, I do believe um, I, I think they made... reading that they were local, actually. Yeah. Local um, but, yeah, I, I actually don't know. Yeah. Um, and it's hard to tell, I guess, isn't it? But there's no, no information that I found to suggest that they weren't anything other than local. Um, here we got the... Oh. Here's the circle, though. Oh, wow, look at that. Yeah. Amazing. So... I... It's tricky to say. Was again like these sites. It's hard to know how old this is. This could be two hundred years old. Right. I mean, um, but it doesn't mean even if it was only two hundred years old, it doesn't mean that it was being re replacing something that was already here. And um, so the the rocks certainly look old. As you can see in the the background there is the standing stone as well. Yeah, look at that. Wow. I mean, that's definitely that's megalithic. Um, and these again, these these circles and these these sites. As again, I said yesterday, our kind of mission statement is to show the the ones that don't get any publicity, which is there's tens of thousands of them around the world, hundreds of thousands even. Sure. So dozens <laughs> here alone, it, probably. Really. Yeah, but so, so we're showing the smaller ones. So they just the megalithic builders. They built massive monuments, and they used they built things out of thousand ton stones. But they didn't only build those things, you know, so they, it's important, I think, for us to come and have a look at these smaller sites. And as I said, I don't know how old it is, but um, as it could have replaced something that was already here. And it's fascinating. I'm sure it is part of the, the puzzle. From the looks of things so this here, one's... too. Oh, my gosh, look at that. That's a good size. Pretty big, yeah? yeah, so that's your it's three and a half meters. That's your spike, something. right? That's your energy spike there. Yeah, and this could be shooting off energies to different parts of the of the national park. There could be other stones that were associated with it. Um, you know, there's there's lots of reasons um, that are cited on websites and talked about, and um, lots of theories. And um, you know, I can believe many of them actually. It's it's, it's at least open-minded to them. Um, but yeah, this. I'm not sure if I can feel energy in this one, but I've, as I said to you recently, I've started to really feel the energy in, in, in these stones. It used to be like tingling going up the arm, but it's, it's, it's grown. Oh, there's some people behind you. Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's we're a not popular alone. site today, huh? 
hikers. They yeah, I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> you can see the storm, we've got a storm coming in behind us. We're gonna have yeah. to wrap this up soon. <laughs> it's gonna get soaked. Like, so I don't know where they're going. Must be crazy. <laughs> You're gonna get wet. <laughs> don't do it. Um, Incredible. Well, I'm looking yes. here, and it looks like there's actually houses too that you can see from the air. There's all sorts of like relics uh, and ruins of like uh, homes built out of rock. It looks like similar to uh, Adam's calendar, the piles hey. of rock that make up what could have once been pens. So those are visible hey. from the sky here. Those are on the, the Merrillville um, website. So if you look around and you see, it looks like maybe about hmm. four or five foot rings. That's about almost two oh, meters really? to you, Mick. Where? I don't know. It, it looks like it's just a photo that's on the history of Maryville, the the heritage site, the English heritage site. The very first photo oh. of the show is a top-down aerial view of some of the houses of the Bronze Age settlement seen from the air. So whatever that oh. is, it looks very much like uh, it looks like my two-year-old toppled down what was once Scarborough Bray is what it looks like. Gotcha. Okay, interesting. Restaurants. But I would say that was that's something worth a look. I don't, now I don't know if that they've got. Oh, Megalithic has such a great photo with it's a picture mm. of where everything kind of is. Uh, but I should we head? To, I mean, look around. There, there's so that. much there. There's so much. It's buried. Obviously. Yeah, there, there is. is. Yeah. I mean, and as I said, like even from walking from the roads to the car park is five meters. And as I said, there's all sorts of things. Um, shapes in the rocks and things that just look like former dolmen or some kind of structure or something. Um, so, yeah, it's cool. There is, so, oh, there, is a as I, there is a settlement that you can go see if you wanted to go north of the circle. You're at the circle now. North. Which way's which way's north? Uh where's the sun? <laughs> sun, are you shitting me? <laughs> right. This is this? England in the summer, mate. If Sun's the, there. If the dolmen and the care no. right, if you put the rows at about your eight o'clock position. At about seven or eight o'clock. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So if you've got your yeah, your back if you've got your back to the circle and then Behind you to your left should be all the all the rows and stuff, and then just walk straight. Behind me to the left is all the rows. No, but if I now walk I straight. say back to the circle. Yeah. So now if you've got your back to the circle and the rows look like that's where those are the rows behind you, right? That I see with the camera. I'm facing the standing stone now. You're facing the the manure? Yeah. I'm in the I'm in the circle facing the standing stone. I think we're um I think I looked at them before. Um, hmm. Well, it's north. Where's, the, where's the compass? If it wasn't for those frigging clouds. Yeah. <laughs> I, I actually think it's going to completely piss it down in a minute. <laughs> if, you're at, if you're standing at the stone circle and the creek is behind you, you want to walk yeah. forward. You want the creek to be directed. That's the... There should be some rocks. Okay. There. There's it rocks should, everywhere. There should be, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It might be like 100 meters. That might not be worth it. Okay. Yeah, if it was a lovely sunny day, mate, I'd be all over that like a, like a rash. Here, yeah. It's a little tough to tell from a map. It doesn't have any pictures of any rocks in any fields, but, you know, it's probably. No. But it's cool. I mean, these old maps are really amazing. Let's head back. Jesus. Coffin stone. Um, Ooh. Coughing stone. Oh, that might be that cyst or something we saw. Um, but anyway, should we? Should we? <laughs> people are probably just going to start falling asleep in a minute. Yeah, Unless, right. should, is there anything else? To, to, <laughs> there's a stone here. <laughs> there's one. It's a stone. <laughs> Clearly, a. <laughs> So yeah, I think we've shown the interesting stuff, really. Um, 
unless there's anything out. Are there any specific myths and legends? And... There are some cool ones. I mean, there's, there's, you know, the Hound of the Baskervilles, the Sherlock Holmes even touched on some of the ancient myths and legends of this place. It's very cool looking. It's very spooky. I mean, yeah, it is cool now. Though. Look at this Kitty Jay's grave. Jay's grave. I don't like that. But the story at the heart of the remains. Kitty Jay was a 19th century farm worker. Uh, that's an oh, interesting man. story. I'm not going to go into that. Anyway, there's a lot going on in this place. It looks very spooky. Very ancient. Yeah. And very spooky. You can see how <laughs> spooky it is. And there's, again, there's like, just pointing it out, just things everywhere. Little mounds and bumps and stones jutting out all over the place. Uh, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle was said to have been inspired to write Sherlock Holmes. Uh, the novel Hound of the Baskervilles from the tales he heard about Dartmoor while staying at the Duchy Hotel in Princetown, which is now the High Moreland Visitor Center. Squire Cavill had a evil right, yeah. reputation, and legend says that when he died in the late 17th century, a pack of black hounds ran howling across Dartmoor. Wow. The bell is buried in Buckfestley, and his coffin was entombed in a small building. Stop him from riding out with his hounds. Whoa, really? <laughs> oh, that's crazy. Uh, right. So I would, I, I would imagine that the winds must be pretty loud when they go through there, huh? Like <laughs> Can you not hear it? I'll take like the, that's why I've got the hood up. I've yeah. got the hood up trying to protect the mic from it, but if I took that off, you could probably hear how windy it is. Wow. I mean, if you just scroll through, there is some incredible... Like the Dolmen, the Spencer's Rock is on their list. Oh, yeah. Lots of stuff. You didn't get to Bowerman's Nose, did you? The granite stack? No, where's that? Maybe we go there. It just looks good. We can change our plan. Some of the sites that we had planned to go to, um, we, we probably won't be able to get reception at. Well, granite stacks are in there. Uh, I've seen them, right? The granite stacks, those stacks of giant stones. This is worth a check yeah. out. Bowerman's Nose. The granite stack near Manhattan has a few tales surrounding it. The most popular is that the Bowerman or that Bowerman was a hunter, and one day in pursuit of a hare, he ran through a coven of witches who were very angry that he'd upset their ritual. The next time Bowerman went hunting, one of the witches turned herself into a hare, led the hunter to chase all over Dartmoor until he was exhausted. Then all the witches turned Bowerman to stone, and his hounds became the rocks at Hound's and it looks very cool. It is very cool. <laughs> that is this is a brilliant get there. Mm. And now we're you? Like to, you know, we are at that back of that thing that's halfway down this row. Um, I think we could probably wrap it up here, but I wanted to say, um, encourage people to come to these places. It's just amazing. We're sleeping here tonight. Wow. It's absolutely beautiful. It's so peaceful. It's such a lovely place to be. As uh, most of these sites, you know, are in spectacular locations. Um, and I wanted to also point out that, you know, there's so many cool people out there with so many good ideas that we want comments and, and um, help investigating what's going on with all these sites. So anyone has any ideas about why this would be halfway down the the row? Um, I can't imagine that this was the bearing a bearing a baby. Yeah. Right in the middle. So, right. And, and there's weird about, stones around it too, huh? It's got like a little circle around it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know it's officially like a little mini can, but um, on an energy level, any, any psychics, anyone who works with these things, got any ideas? Um, <clears throat> then please contact us. Be awesome. And obviously, just sounding off in the comments is the best way to do. It. Let's reach out to those comments now. Let's see who's here. We have uh, Sue. Sue wants to comment. You're going to need an umbrella very soon. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Thank true. you. True. Uh, the great ship of humanity. Hello, sorry I'm late. Day seven of ah, it's a thing. Protests and beyond, right? Yeah, it's been crazy. Mm -hmm. Thank you for joining. Mm -hmm. Wished I wish wished I was there. Yeah, true that. Look at that place. It's awesome. Yeah. Rain and all. It looks fantastic. Ah, it's not so bad, but we are going to get wet getting back to the yeah. van. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that's the perfect time. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thanks for.
this uh, coming to this live stream. Please remember to tune in tomorrow at the same great channel and same bad time. Hey, <laughs> closing words. Um, no, yes. Thank you for joining. Thank you for watching. Um, yeah, I'm not sure where we're going to go tomorrow. We've got to check out different receptions and you know all the see what kind of internet we get in all these different places but please join they're great places i want to like to go to some stone circles i'd like to go to that really long row that's over three kilometers um i think that's where we might head to but there's plenty of choice We've got yeah. gray weather stone circle and, and all sorts of places so please come and join us again if you're watching um after this was live um the recorded version then again please comment and Spread the word, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye, everybody.